I mean, actually, as I was watching the movie, I found one of the one of the most powerful and, and poignant scenes was just the two of them really not saying anything, but kind of rubbing their legs against one another and doing those kind of things, you know? So I think that with with that, they really didn't have to speak too much, you know? Well, what, what happened there was that nine, nine times since they were eight, and when I cast it with uh, Mercedes' mother sitting there on their 16th birthday, or maybe they were still 15, and a couple of days away from their, from their birthday, uh, I said, well, you know, in the film, you know, you kids have to make love, have sex, and you have to kiss, and really make out. And I said, people like known each other all these years, have you ever uh, kissed each other? And, and, and Mercedes said, sure, lots of times. And like her, uh, her, her mother went, oh my God, and put her hands on her head and then said, oh, I've done worse. So uh, it was kind of funny. And, and uh, they, had, they had done like truth or dare, which always ended in a kiss or something, or maybe something more, I don't know. And uh, uh, so it was fine that way. But, but anyway, during the, during the shooting, I could see them kind of falling in puppy love. They were, they, because uh, on the set, every, everybody's a lot older, right? All the crew and the cast, everybody is older. So they would be together hanging out. And they were like falling in love. And you could see it. So so I told my uh, uh, cinematographer, Dave, Dave Newbert, I said, keep the camera on them. When we're not shooting, when we're not rolling, when we're not doing anything, keep the camera on them. Look at them. That's what I want. And so he, he rolled all the time with them. And uh, uh, we would do like elaborate scenes with the band, the Barber Baiters playing, this whole band, and then the crowd are uh, the, uh, the, uh, the people who like came to, to uh, Mary Farley's house. Mary, Mary Farley plays as his mother in the movie. And it's actually her house with the chickens and the parrots and the birds. And uh, so we had this big scene, and I said, no, I said, just stay on Adam and uh, Mercedes, right? Stay on them. So there's a whole scene going on, but I don't show you that. I just stay on them because that was that, that was where the heat is, you know. That's, you could, like, see them just, like, being into each other and playing around. And then on that side of there, and they're doing the things with their feet and legs and stuff. And uh, that's not scripted. That's just me watching them and being aware of and, uh, uh, and it really translates into the film because it's real. It's real moments there. Um, so, that's, so, so that was fun. Um, so what, what, I know that uh, initially you were supposed to shoot like Ken Park, I think it was, on digital, but you ended up shooting it on 35. Um, what, uh, what, what do you prefer? Or how do you feel about the new uh, the digital revolution coming in? Everyone's shooting on you know DSLR. I mean, it's right. You know, it's uh, it's a lot cheaper. It moves quicker. Well, 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 you know, you're still making a movie. You have to light it. You don't really move that quicker, and it still costs money. But uh, uh, but you can shoot the longer takes. And there, uh, and everything is uh, digital now. And all the movie theaters in New York, by law, have to be digital by 2014. And it and it costs about 100 grand to go from film to digital. So all the small theaters are going out of business. All the art theaters uh, have gone out of business already. Um, uh, the small indie theaters are dropping like flies every day all over the country. Plus, I can never get a fucking rating anyway by the fucking um, MPAA, which is a, a censorship board, not government, but just studio. And they pick on the indie films. And so, fuck them all. You know, I just said, I'm going to uh, uh, shoot, you know, digital and go straight to the, the people, the internet, you know, and straight to the kids and straight to the people that want to see my film and cut out, uh, you know, Hollywood and the crooks and all that kind of stuff. Because no matter what kind of contracts you have, you never get paid. They always find a way to do it with their creative account and, and all that, you know. So so any any money that you get from a movie, you, you basically have to get in front. That's why all the big stars like Brad Pitt or uh, Angelina or, or, or um, anybody. 
they get all their money in front. You know, you know, fuck back in, they just take their money in front, you know, and, uh, and that's why they get so much. Because they know they're not going to see, see it after that, you know. And, uh, so, I, so, I, so, I, so I just thought, you know, that I would go go the opposite way instead of crying over the end of the film. I would just, you know, embrace it. And I'm, and I'm new to it, you know. I mean, uh, maybe six, seven years ago, I was like one of those guys that said, uh, oh, 35 millimeters is dead, you know, I'm only going to shoot 35, and then I just changed my mind. I saw what was happening. Um, so, as far as film goes, who uh, who are your influences? Who do you uh, do you take notes from? When you're, uh, well, filming? I was. Well, you take notes from everybody. But film is all about stealing, and can you always say uh, I'm doing the homage to so and so, an homage, an homage, because visually. I do uh, uh, a lot of uh, homages to myself because I've, I've been a photographer for 50 years. Um, in 62, I saw Shadows by Cassavetes, and I, I, was, I was from Oklahoma. I was, I was from a place like Marfa, Texas. Uh, and I grew up on like John Ford and John Wayne and uh, Doris Day and Rock Hudson and all those movies. And when I saw shadow, uh, Shadows, I said, gee, man, this, this guy sees the way I do, you know? Because I, I had just started photographing Tulsa pictures. And I saw the pictures in 62, and I saw Shadows, and I said, this guy sees like I do. And so that was really an eye-opener, and really uh, 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 an inspiration to me. And I was making all my friends look good, because I was showing the pictures. If you don't make people look good, I was making them look like movie stars taking drugs back then when it was really a secret. But I would take the pictures back then and show them and, and, if, and if you're making them look bad, you know, they're not going to want you to let them, you know, they're not going to really want you to be taking pictures of them. And I was part of the scene, but I always had my camera. And if I didn't have my camera, they'd say, Larry, what's your camera? So it was a real organic thing. It was just, I was just one of the, the, the guys shooting drugs so that happened to have a camera all the time. And, uh, because my mother photographed babies and my mother, you know, and I went for my, for my parents and little mom and pop baby photography place, uh, door to door outfit, it was called. And, uh, so, anyway, so, so I would say that I, and, and I was influenced by Bob Dylan back then, because when Bob Dylan first came out in 61, 62, he said, um, uh, you know, you don't have to be like your parents. You can do anything you want to do. Uh, and uh, he's a couple of years older than me, but not much. I think he's 71, I'm 69. But I just saw him at the Bar Barclays Center. He was rocking out, man. He was really good. And, and his new album, The Tempest, uh, Tempest, The Tempest, is great. The guy's writing has never been, it's, it's just so good. And his voice is cleared up. It doesn't sound like he's uh, guarding with Drano so much. And, uh, for the last 10 years, and he, he sounded great, and he was, he was fantastic. So, with, uh... And then, and then, also Lenny Bruce, who talked about the truth. And so all this happened at the same time. I like to hear Lenny Bruce, uh, I hear Bob Dylan, and I see shadows. I would say Dylan, and Cassavetes, and, um, uh, Lenny Bruce especially. I mean, I can see a lot of Cassavetes in your movies, just, you know, the handheld, just the kind of fly on the wall type of thing. So what uh, what are your plans for the rest of the trilogy from Harper Girl? Are they going to be uh, ex available exclusively on your website? You're just going to cut out Hollywood uh, yeah. cut them fully? Go so let's on the website. Okay. You know, because the magazines are on the web now. I did an uh, interview with this magazine, Vice, that I used to know well, and I used to take up a free copy of it. And, uh, and the guy from Vice said, well, you know, the best way is for us to put you on the web, or, you know, because of this website for the magazine. And, and I'm thinking, gee, you know, I'm going to be in the fucking internet one day. You know, I'd rather be in the magazine. And then I found out that, that you know, magazines, are, well, I kind of knew this anyway, magazines are dead. And everything is, is internet, the web. And Vice is huge on the, on the web, and the magazines are, you know, just extra. And, and now, like, Newsweek is going to quit publishing, and they're going to be only, only on the internet and the web. So, you know, that's the future, and the future is now, and so, you know, so yeah, that's 
can make a lot more movies now. And, and, and I got five or six more to make. And I can make it, make them, and uh, not have to, you know, be fucked by Hollywood and have to wait so long and have all these producers get this money and all these ways and you don't get paid anyway. And, it's, and, and a lot of times you're just wasting your time. You spend two or three years of your life trying to make a movie. It doesn't happen. So now anybody can make a film. We need small digital cameras. You know, you can make films. Kids make films. You know, one-year-old kids t t take, t t t take an iPhone and take pictures of themselves and look at themselves. I mean, it's all changed, and, and, and it's great. I think. Well, Larry, thank you so much for uh, for talking to us, and uh, <clears throat> wish you luck with uh, your future projects. Thank you.